What is Jacob Zuma's endgame? Does he genuinely believe that Mkonto Wesiswe got two-thirds of the vote in the national election and that those votes have been deliberately stolen from them by the ICC under the cover of a data breach? Does he genuinely think that he has been chosen by the majority of South Africans to be the next president of the country and make the changes, I was trying to think of a, a neutral word, make the changes that the manifesto says the MK party would make were they to get into parliament with a two-thirds majority. Surely he can't. I mean, he's, he's not a particularly well-educated man, but he has proven over and over and over and over again over the years that he's a very smart and very canny man. So what's his end game? Is it is it to laugh into his sleeve at the chaos that he is causing for the party that he feels abandoned him, threw him to the political wolves? I, I just don't know. Professor Ntikilelo Breakfast, a uh, political analyst on the line to us now from Klebecha. Ntikilelo, good afternoon. I mean, do you have a, a sort of reasonably clear sense in your own head of what Jacob Zuma is trying to achieve? On a lighter note, I think my uh, crystal ball is uh, broken. <laughs> 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 but anyway, um, on a serious note, I think Mshalozi has a uh, an unfinished business. I mean, he is on record having said that, that he's got uh, an unfinished uh, business. Remember, there was a fallout between him and uh, Ramaphosa. So that's why he broke away from the AEC to form um, Umkondo and uh, Wesizwe. Um, and he wants to use it as a platform to unleash, in my view, some attacks to the president of the ANC. <laughs> it sounds crazy because he says that he's still the member of the ANC. He says he wants to correct the ANC through um, Umkondo Wesizwe, which doesn't make sense because you cannot be a member of two political parties that have no strategic um, uh, alliance. Um, but he has been voted by a lot of people uh, a sizable number, and the thing we must respect the will of the people. But at the same time, it does back the question in my view. Of course, I mean, democracy is about, you know, the will of the people, but also it does back the question about the political psychology of our voters because, I mean, Sholozi has ran. I mean, one of the, the pillars of politics is a propaganda machinery uh, campaign, and he has ran a propaganda machinery campaign by projecting himself as a victim. So, I mean, when you see people voting for his party, of course, I mean, his party, let's be honest, it revolves around him as a person. That's, that's, that's one of the arguments that they are putting forward, that there's no way, you know, in terms of the lineup of political parties, that Umkondo Wesizwe can be in number three, and the DA is in number two, because they say, according to them, that Zuma is more popular than the leader of the DA, yeah, which is uh, debatable. But anyway... I mean, the mere fact that people can vote for him, in my opinion, it, it, it showcases that they are giving in to his narrative that he's a victim. I mean, you have a person, for instance, who showed a middle finger, the president of the constitutional court, meaning that he wants to account to I mean, himself, but people are approving that, which is fine. I mean, uh, it's their choice. But I, I'm not convinced that there is a, a genuine agenda. I mean, I, I like him as a person in terms of his uh, uh, maneuverability, but uh, I mean, I don't think that he is doing this in good faith um, because he speaks about wanting to amend the constitution to accommodate, you know, traditional leaders. I don't know. Also, he has some issues with members of the LGBTQI, which is unconstitutional. So um, I think that's 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 his uh, agenda. But the, the the fear that let me let, let me talk about the uh, attempt to put the upcoming um, uh, national assembly sitting on hold. I think he's looking for a justification as to why he couldn't get two thirds. Because that that was his uh, uh, prediction. So that has been a project gone wrong. And the argument that is putting forward as to why uh, the meeting on Friday should not take place doesn't make sense. Because, I mean, you have a platform to institute your grievances to the IEC. Once those issues have been uh, exhausted, then the IEC makes some... Um, a declaration. So results have been declared as free and fair. You can't then bring other matters then, yeah. unless you want to approach um, uh, the court of law. Um, so yeah, that's, 
that's, can, that's, that's how things are, yeah. Can I ask you what what you think, and I appreciate you said it in jest, but none of us has a working crystal ball when it comes to Jacob Zuma's true intent. But what do you think he might regard as success? At which point, at which point he, he might say to himself, you have corrected the ANC, you've got your revenge, you showed them what a mistake they made by treating you the way that they did, so you can now retire from this world of politics and, and drink tea and look after your cattle. Do you, do you think he has that sort of clear endpoint in mind? Look, I mean, this uh, revenge, unfortunately, he wants to pursue it at the expense of the country. <laughs> I think he's that kind of a person who always puts himself at. You know, I mean, that's why, for instance, I mean, we had uh, um, an outbreak of conflict in 2021. And, he, I mean, even at the moment, he doesn't speak about peace, trying to cool off people, you know, so long as he achieves what he wants to achieve, which is quite sad, you know. There were some leaders, they, they put national interest first. Um, but he definitely, in my view, wants to to be at the helm of power, uh, again, which doesn't make sense because the Constitution says you can only serve for two terms, and he has served almost two terms. Um, so I don't understand what is the issue now. And if you look at the, the, the party that he leads, well, of course, they enjoy support, well, maybe throughout the land and the breadth of the country, but with a, a strong presence in a case of end. But the worst part of it is that the, I get the sense that the party revolves around him. And and I don't know if he walks away from the party, what is going to happen to the party? Because, I mean, I'm sure even yourself, you don't know other leaders of, of the party except him, you know. And that's why they, they fought for him to, to be the embodiment of the party in the build-up to um, the uh, election. Thank you very much for peering into that cloudy and broken crystal ball of yours, Professor Nsikilelo of Breakfast, the legal analyst, on the line there to, to us from Klebecha in the Eastern Cape.